Hello everyone, I wanted to do a real quick recording to talk about gaming mice, specifically a feature that I think is missing from a lot of mice and should be on them. People will recommend the G502 Lightspeed or one of the many other uh, mice that are kind of expensive or, you know, have that bandwagon attached to it. But let me go ahead and, and talk about why I disagree with this. Okay, so to help you understand why this is important, what I'm about to talk about, let me talk about software. There are a lot of software out there now with the different keyboards, mice, and headsets. Uh, Logitech has their G Pro software, uh, Corsair has their uh, Commander or whatever it's called, and Rokats, the Swarm software, the list goes on. The problem with all this software is it requires it to be able to connect to the mouse. So there could always be an issue with the operating system, bugs in the software, updates are needed, or one of the many other issues that come with having software. You can't count on software to work all the time. For that reason, it's good to find alternatives uh, to work around the software. Um, you know, so if you do have an issue, then you have something else to work with. With that out of the way, now I can talk about it. It's the DPI button. I do have a Rocat Kova, a really old model. I think they've made new ones since mine, but with my Rocat Kova, I, my DPI button is on top of the mouse right next to the scroll wheel. It's a great feature to have because it's built into the mouse. It doesn't require software for you to change the sensitivity on the mouse itself. It completely avoids the need for hardware. I think it's a far better way of handling things due to the uh, inability to rely on the software as I was just mentioning. It of course has its drawbacks. Uh, the few mice that do have um, the DPI button on them, it is fairly easy to accidentally hit it. Or, uh, in other cases, it could be um, that it doesn't have too many settings. Uh, meaning, it could be a really small increment or a really large increment. It could be anywhere from a 200 DPI increase per button click all the way up to 600 per click. It really is hard to find a mouse that has the DPI button, and also, for that matter, one hard to find one that has a pretty good balance of different settings built into it. Either way though, it is a really great option to have and I enjoy the heck out of it. Whenever there's um, uh, a game where I just can't get the sensitivity right or something, I entirely rely on my mouse to correct that. So uh, yes, if you can get around <laughs> not accidentally hitting it or uh, uh, you know, get to know the mouse, I think that you will find um, why I'm recommending this feature. With that recommendation, I will go ahead and point out some of the mice that I'm aware of that have this. It's not a very long list, unfortunately. It's just not a common feature. But you'll see one um, up on the screen that I've had for a while. This is the Logitech GT03. I've read some reviews, and they said that the uh, onboard memory is not great or not working or something like that. It was only one review though, so I'm unsure if it's a common issue um, or if it's just an isolated incident. If it's an isolated incident, then the review shouldn't have posted that. But unfortunately, uh, the review where I did read this, which was um, Tom's Hardware by the way, um, yeah, if it was just an isolated incident, they should have been honest about that. But if it was an isolated incident, it should have been mentioned in the uh, the review because I didn't see it anywhere. If I missed it, somebody can for sure correct me if they want to. But yeah, um, as far as the other uh, reviews are concerned, besides Tom's hardware, they seem to echo that it has like a rubber cable that doesn't color match real well. Eh, who cares? Honestly, it's a $30 mouse. It's easy to replace if necessary. And you can take steps to avoid... Um, damaging a rubber cord, uh, such as uh, painter's tape. One of the things that I do to um, avoid uh, fraying my mouse cords 
is I have painter's tape attached to the edges of, well, edges or corners of my gaming setup. Um, that way, if the core does travel over those edges or corners, then it's not going to fray. It has a very smooth, uh, soft surface for it to, um, to slide around on. That's how I handle that problem when it comes to something like a rubber cord or uh, a cord that's easy to fray. But anyways, that's the GTO3. Let me move on to Rogat. Okay, so Rocat has a few options uh, for the wired side. You can see uh, the Burst Pro, Burst Core, Con 120 AMO, Kane 120 AMO, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Uh, let me scroll down. Uh, Cobra. Um, I think the Cone Pure Ultra has that. Uh, if not, the Kova Amo and Kova Amo Remastered both for sure have it. Um, I know the Kova series to have um, the button because I've been using Kova Mice for quite a while. So that's on the wired side. Let me just quickly mention the other ones. Or excuse, excuse me, uh, mention the other one. As for a wireless option, they have the uh, Kane 200 Amo. Well, technically 200, 202. They have a numbering system for the black or white uh, colors of this. I think it's the 202 that's the white one and the 200's the black one. So, yeah, um, that can get confusing uh, if you're looking on eBay. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Amazon. If you're looking on Amazon, it's uh, 200 for black, 202 for white. That's how you have to remember. But there's your entire list of um, Rocat um, mice options. Now, um, let me scroll back. Uh, let's see, it was this one. Okay. So, um, I've read some reviews on the Burst Core to try and see what uh, was said about that. Um, they mentioned similar issues with the cord on this one, just like the G203. Um, Again, just use the blue painter's tape trick I just mentioned. Um, if that really is an issue. Uh, another thing I saw with the negatives posted about this mouse is that the um, they don't like the looks of the DPI button. I totally disagree with this for a very good reason. For me, when um, looking at the mouse or even window shopping, if uh, you will, if people want to call it that, it helps me to see the DPI button clearly labeled. Um, you know, because then that way I am more aware that it's the DPI button, not just when looking at the product page, but also if I do happen to have that product, then I can look down and see that's my DPI button. Um, another thing, too, that was I felt not mentioned in regards to the Burst Core um, is that small dip between the two main mouse buttons and uh, that middle part where the DPI button is. Um, the reason I feel like it should have been mentioned is because that's kind of a bonus. I'll, I'll try to explain. Um, my old Rocat Kova is a very flat mouse. It's a flat surface and all the buttons are pretty exposed. It does make it easier to press, but it also makes it easier to have an accidental press with the DPI button. If I had a small dip or gap um, in the middle of the mouse like this, that would give me more than a visual cue that my finger is about to hit that DPI button. It would also give me a feel uh, alert, I guess you can say, that I am moving my finger towards the DPI button because uh, I can feel a dip in the mouse if there is going to be one. So uh, that's actually um, a good feature. Now, um, yeah, so uh, that's kind of like the burst core and where I feel like the reviews went wrong. Um, I will say before I get into something um, that I can totally recommend most Rocat products. Rocat over the years, just like any company, has had um, their ups and downs. 
there's been bad products, but there's also been good products. As of late, it's been mostly good products. If you read reviews on not just their mice, but their keyboards and headsets, you'll see that they've done really well with um, keyboards and headsets as well. As a matter of fact, I think it's like the Vulcan 120 keyboard, I, I think is the name. Somebody can quote me on that if they can remember or find it on Google. But I do remember reviews saying that Rocat has one of the most quiet keyboards currently in the market, if not the most quiet. So they've been doing a very good job with their products. Um, and I honestly would recommend it f far over uh, Logitech or Corsair products, not just because of my experience with it, but also because I recognize they do a really good job with their software. Uh, if you read any reviews um, from any one of those uh, mentioned areas, you will see that one of the praises they give is how good the software is, and they really are good at that software. While you can certainly rely on just the DPI button alone, um, it is nice to know that the software is very good. That out of the way, I will say one thing uh, to finish this recording and uh, kind of like branch off on the uh, topic a little bit. While I do appreciate having a DPI button, I think it would be great if there was a DPI plus and minus button because then that would give me fast access to lowering the DPI or increasing it. So if I'm playing like a shooter or something and I need to transition from using an AR to a sniper, then I can just as easily transition the DPI to accommodate my play style with that particular weapon. Um, with the way the DPI buttons are now, when it's this just single DPI button, is you have to click it multiple times uh, for it to cycle through its DPI presets. Having um, a plus and minus would allow you to transition um, up or down instead of just going up to force it down. Hopefully that made sense. But um, yeah, if you ever want to get a mouse, I highly recommend having this feature regardless. It is a great workaround of software. That's all I have to say. Thanks for listening.